All right, part three of creating your own cryptocurrency trading bot is finally here. Sorry about the wait. Uh, you'll recognize the concepts we learned in part one and part two, but the code has been completely rewritten from the ground up to get rid of all the spaghetti code we ended up with at the end of part two. Um, all different parts of the bot are now decoupled, as we'll get into. Uh, you're now able to update the display, uh, the exchange you're using, your trading strategy itself, and everything else without affecting the other sections of the code, you know, in the typical object-oriented way that good code is supposed to be. Uh, so as you're about to see, uh, this is going to make updating the coach, the code much, much more clear and easier. Uh, because of this refactoring, I've moved the code to a separate repository that I've linked to in the description of this video. Um, this code will be the basis for all future Python bot videos. The old code is going to remain in the old repository for people viewing part one and part two of this series, uh, but make sure to update the repo that you're looking at for part three and beyond. Uh, I know you've been waiting a while for this video, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that I split the back testing and the live trading into two different scripts. Um, it just made things a whole, a whole lot more clean and simple. So let's take a look at this back testing. This is really all that's um, all there is to it now. You choose which chart you want to back test on here. So we're using our example, the Polonix Exchange. Um, Bitcoin to Monero, and we're choosing our period of 300. Uh, creating a new bot strategy, which we'll look at in just a second. And then we're just cycling through all that data we just got um, through each point and calling each point a tick. That just means a moment in time to kind of run through everything and, and see what we have, see if there's any open positions, see if any open positions we have can be closed. So that's really, you know, before we had a whole bunch of spaghetti code, um, and this helps us see the big picture really well. It's, it's just really that simple. So let's take a look at what some of those things um, do. So first, bot chart. Um, this should be familiar code to you uh, at this point. Um, you know, obviously you have to put in your own keys here for your Poloniex API keys. Um, just choosing the pair and the period that were passed in, and then I hard-coded in a start time and end time. Um, it'd be easy enough for you to add those variables um, in the original call, and also then to be able to pass them into the command line argument. Uh, to know how to do that, check out part one of this series, and I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer to add that functionality if you want. Otherwise, just play around with the hard-coded numbers to get this thing working. Um, so then the next thing is bot strategy. Now this is really nice. Our strategy is completely um, abstracted away so we can focus on just that part of it once we've got everything else working the way we want it to. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, so we've got some initialization done when the strategy is first instantiated. Um, we're loading in a suite of indicators, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, but the tick is the main unit here. Um, and you'll recall um, that's called strategy tick. So for every single data point we get back from Poloniex, uh, we call tick on the strategy. Basically just gets the current price for that tick, um, adds that to a growing list of prices, which then the indicators can then use to do things like the moving average, um, the support and resistance trend lines. Um, and we're also outputting this to a log as we go. So I've also abstracted that away. So we have bot log, um, import bot log, um, and you can change just that too. Right now, all it does is print to the command line. But if you wanted, you know, in part two, we went over kind of creating an HTML document that gives you a better visualization. You could just dump all that code into here, and that way you can. Um, edit just the visualization code without having to worry about changing up the strategy code or the indicator code or anything like that. Um, and we'll get into in future videos um, expanding on that visualization. Um, so the next thing it does every tick is it evaluates positions. So this is really the mathematical um, key of the of this strategy itself. It's going through Okay, so what it's doing here in evaluate positions, um, our strategy is encoded in here. So we're saying 
First, we're, um, so it tracks all the trades, whether they're open or closed, so we get historical data from our strategy as well. So it's just um, figuring out all the open trades, and then it's saying if the number of open trades is less than the number of semi simultaneous trades that we're allowing, which is right now is one. So basically, if there's already tra a trade open, it's not going to open a new trade. Um, you could change that number to have two, three, four trades going at, a same, at the same time, up to infinity, or however you want to do it. But for now, just to see if our strategy is working correctly and things like that, I wanted to stick to just one trade at a time. So then here's the crux of whether or not to open a position. This is the old strategy from some of our other videos where we say if the current price is less than the moving average with a 15, um, with a period of 15. Um, so that calls, you'll recall we have the self, uh, the self dot indicators, which loads the bot indicators class. We have a moving average in here. And that's all the logic for the moving average. It doesn't have to clutter up our strategy. We just make the call to that external object. Uh, you know, as these videos go along, we're going to populate this with all of our indicators that we want to use in our strategy. So if it's less than the moving average, we go ahead and open up that trade, and we'll look at the guts of that here in just a second. Um, and then, you know, in this code that runs every tick, the evaluate positions, we go through any open trades we may have. Um, remember, this uh, this open trades variable just loaded all the currently open trades and looks at whether or not um, it's time to close them. That's something I stressed at the end of part two of this series is that we're building a real trading strategy here. Um, as part of that is knowing when to close trades. Um, so the strategy is if our current price is below the moving average, then we open a trade until it goes above the moving average, and then we close the trade. It's a really simplified strategy. It's probably not going to make us money in the long run, but it helps get us up and running on this new code. Yeah, so that's all this is saying. If the current price is more than the 15 uh, per moving average of a period of 15, um, and this is just looking at the open trades, then go ahead and close that trade. Then down here we have show positions, which again, every tick is just printing things out to the command line or logging it in whatever way we have bot log to set up to log. So let's go, then go take a look at bot trade here and see what that looks like. So we have some initialization here that happens. Um, and this is, you'll recall from bot strategy, what we're doing is we're, um, there's no trade open function because the initialization um, is handling that because there's no sense in creating a tr bot trade object if you're not opening a trade. So kind of taking the lazy way out, but it works. Uh, setting, the sat setting the status to open, setting the entry price to the current price, setting the exit price to a point in the future, and just giving our, our log some output. Um, closing the trade consists of just setting the status to close, um, setting the exit price, and then also logging the information. So you notice we're not actually making any trades here. That's because I'm going over the back testing stuff. Uh, we'll go over the code for the live trading stuff at a future video. So in the show trade functionality just says, you know, entry price, status, exit price. Uh, this is some fancy stuff to make it in colors if the trade was profitable, uh, you know, green if it's profitable, red if it wasn't profitable. And then this is just dumping this all out to the log again. So that's it. You know, this code is much, much cleaner, much easier to understand. Um, and let's go ahead and see what the output from the bot log is. There you have it. You'll see this is a halfway decent strategy. I mean, it's really simple, but there's a lot of green. Um, one thing to take into account when we're doing this back testing is this not is not taking into account the exchange fees. So Polonix in every trade um, takes a fee. So that's something we'll have to factor in in a, in a future video. Um, so this trade might not this strategy might not actually be profitable. We'll have to take that into account and see. But you know you get the gist of it. So now you can very easily play around with the strategy by just changing this code here. So really, 
this is your core strategy. All the rest of this code is out of the way and it can stay the same. So this is the base code from now on. Like I said, this is going to separate this is going to go in a separate repo. We're going to go ahead and expand on this in future videos. And each feature video is going to be dedicated to a specific section. So if, now instead of just refactoring this code over and over and adding to it, we're going to say add a few indicators in a video or we'll update the login functionality, um, things like that. So I hope you enjoy. Um, the next videos coming out right at the same time with this are uh, how to add a stop loss and protect yourself, uh, which is a very important aspect of this all. So make sure and check that out. Thanks for your patience, guys, and have a great day.